So today we have an interesting case of a 22-year-old female who was clinically totally normal on a routine medical examination. A full blood count showed that in addition a white blood cell count was also normal, hemoglobin was normal, but that she had a low platelet count. So an isolated thrombocytopenia which means low platelet count. And what was reported here on the peripheral blood smear was platelet satellism. So somebody looked at the smear of this patient and saw this. So you can see here a neutrophil in the middle of the screen surrounded by small little cells and these are platelets. And we call that platelet sa satellitism or rosetting. Rosetting. And the qu question here is what causes this and does it matter? Now if we look at the, the way the blood was drawn, it was taken in a tube containing EDTA, usually tubes containing EDTA as mentioned in some of my other screencasts um, have purple tops. And it's important to note that EDTA is really the culprit here. So let's have a closer look at what happens uh, to these platelets when exposed to EDTA. So let's just draw a platelet. So let's say we've got one platelet there with on its surface an antigen, that's just a molecule on the surface, and in this case it is called glycoprotein, GP, glycoprotein 2B, 3a that's the name of this molecule all right now under normal circumstances uh, normal human beings should not have any antibodies that will bind against this glycoprotein 2b 3a but sometimes people may have antibodies that could bind to a slightly modified glycoprotein 2b3 so let's say we've got another platelet here and we have a slightly modified glycoprotein 2b so let's say modified then in a few patients you may find that they have circulating antibodies antibodies that could actually bind to this, let's just draw an antibody there, once again two heavy chains, two light chains, and this antibody can now bind to the glycoprotein 2B3A. And what was the cause of this modification? Well, it was EDTA. EDTA. So in other words, what happened here was that in the tube, let's say there are some platelets in the tube, in the blood tube, the platelets were slightly modified by EDTA in a way that their glycoprotein 2B3A antigens changed and subsequently the antibodies that were already circulating in the tube, they were just in the patient but they were not causing any harm because the patient doesn't have EDTA in, in, in his or her body, um, these antibodies could now in the tube bind to the platelets and this then led to platelet binding to the surface of white blood cells so if we take a white large white blood cell here with its nucleus um, and this white blood cell has on its surface a receptor called an FC receptor and now you have the platelet that we showed here with the modified receptor the mo modified glycoprotein 2b3a and an antibody binding there and now you can see that the two can stick together there are other more non-specific ways by which platelets let's just make that nice and purple whereby platelets can also bind through other mechanisms to white blood cells. 
in, in the test tube in vitro. And you can see here we call this platelet satellitism or rosetting. And what would happen now is when you send, when you put this tube of blood through an automated cell counter, automated cell counter, this counter will measure the cells that they come as they come through and we'll look at the cells size and complexity we've mentioned this before and explained this before in the talk on platelet clumping which is a slightly different phenomenon and the platelets will now be counted as part of the white blood cells which means that they will not be counted individually and therefore the platelet count will be falsely low. Let, no, no, note here, falsely decreased. So the real platelet count is higher than this. Now, in contrast to platelet lumping, which could happen in different anticoagulants, here it only happens with EDTA. And if you repeat your blood count with citrate, which is another anticoagulant, it was found that the true platelet count was 215, which is completely normal. You can see here, normal platelet count is 150 to 400. And when the blood smear was repeated, the patient had no platelet satellism any longer. So this is another example of pseudothrombocytopenia. In other words, a falsely decreased platelet count. So for all practical purposes, when you see a patient with a low platelet count, and peripheral blood smear report shows platelet satellitism. You must repeat the count on a different anticoagulant like citrate to get a true value before you start doing any investigations that may be costly or dangerous to your patients.